Have you ever dreamed of escaping the rat race? Trading in the nine to five for the great outdoors. I want you in making noise, hands on those bottoms. Come on, get in there, go on, go on. Now, three families from all over Britain want to find out what life as a farmer is really like. I'm absolutely covered in poo. They'll be living and working on the hill farm of their mentor, Gareth Wynne-Jones. It takes a family to run a farm. And that's what I want to see with these guys. These families have got to work from the little ones to the big ones, all working together. This yurt camp will be their home in the foothills of Snowdonia. Hello. Oh, they're actually quite nice. They'll have their own livestock to look after around the clock. Oh, it's been sick on me. Oh. And they'll work on local farms to explore where our food comes from. You let it refill. OK? It's as easy as that. Each week, Gareth and I will judge their efforts and reward those who've got what it takes. I know it has been a bit of a roller coaster. Your brains are probably fried. They'll experience the realities of rural life <laughs> and face tough decisions about the animals in their care. I'm not going to make a farm, am I? It's about hard work and teamwork. If you could work every single day for the rest of your life with your family, I would snatch the hand off to take it. And it's all in a day's work on the family farm. I'm fed up with hearing sirens and traffic lights and people shouting and roaring at you. This is perfect. Mark, Sarah, get that fork and get that spade over here. I've got a job for you. It's not looking good, is it? No. Oh, well, I want you to load all that poo into this big spreader. You've got a couple of hours to do it, so by the time I get back, I'm really hoping all this is out. Come on, guys. Have you got any gloves? You don't need gloves. Oh, you are kidding me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Let's do it. Oh. How deep is it? Good lad. I reckon we've got another <laughs> two stories <laughs> to go. We're going to end up in Narnia. Oh, once you get underneath it, it really smells. It always gives us the best jobs. That's it. Stop, you're throwing it over me. I thought this is how you shovel. Nestled in the foothills of Snowdonia, the families have formed their own countryside community on Gowlis Farm. Have you got both of them to go? Yeah. That's probably milking that, isn't it? Doing well, isn't she? But after a few weeks of hard graft, there are some tired heads and sore limbs in the family's yurt camp. The last few days have been really, really good. They've been eye-opening, um, knackering. All the families have gotten to know one another. We've had some fun times. And I woke up this morning just praying we weren't doing anything more <laughs> because I was just falling apart. But it's great just to be part of it all. I didn't realise it was so difficult, but it has definitely opened up my eyes. Last time, Gareth and I sent our families away from the hill farm to experience how commercial farmers produce affordable food to feed a nation. The McNulty's from Glasgow found out how intensively pork needs to be produced on a big scale. The Morgan family from Tembe saw what it takes to get free-range eggs onto supermarket shelves. Wow! And the Burtons from Staleybridge near Manchester visited a large dairy farm where the herd is mostly kept indoors. Well, I thought it would be in a field. I didn't realise it was, it was this. Now we have something very different in store for our apprentice farmers. Good morning. Now, last time, we sent you away to look at some more industrial farming, bigger units, uh, a way of people trying to make a living from farming by upscaling. This time, we're going to do the opposite, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. 
we're going to send you to smaller farms, family farms. Yeah. What are these people doing? Well, the artisan, they're bringing the power back to themselves. They're producing it and they're selling it farm to fork, gate to plate, whatever you want to call it. But you're going to be part of this and understanding the whole process. Small family farms form the backbone of the rural community in this corner of North West Wales. And many pride themselves on supplying local produce directly to the consumer with an emphasis on quality and taste. If our families are serious about changing their lives to become farmers and food producers, they're about to find out firsthand how challenging it can be. I think the families will get a shock how hard some of these smaller processes work, how many hours it takes to get that product on to some of these plates. There's more than just the financial costs sometimes. There's an emotional, mental, physical cost to farming. It can be heartbreaking, but it can be massively rewarding as well. First up are police officers Lucy and Dominique, who want to leave their city lives in Glasgow for the countryside. They're visiting a small dairy farm on the stunning Clean Peninsula. Early start. We got off at uh, three, half, three. half three this morning, and now it's uh, just after five o'clock, so we need to start getting a move on, bring the cows in from the fields, get them in and get the process started. The girls are going to be working with second-generation dairy farmer Dylan Jones on the 300-acre Bryn Reeve farm. Next way, way. Come on. It's a commitment to be a dairy farmer. There's always milking to be done twice a day. I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's a challenge. There's something different every day. Dylan and his family have a herd of 200 Holstein Friesian milking cows. They graze these rich pastures from March through to October. I try and produce the best product that my cows can eat and the best quality of grass. And it's their job to turn that grass into flavor, flavors of milk. This morning, something has caught Dylan's eye. Well, newborn calf. Just check if everything's OK. I think she'll be OK. Oh, is that a little calf? Oh, is this just newborn? Yeah, yeah. 10 minutes. Oh. Wow. It's OK, so okay. most probably when we finish milking, she'll be suckled. So, Good. all right, yeah. back to the milking. The herd yields about 4,000 litres of milk a day, and most of it is bought by a large local cheese producer. Hey, come on, girls. Come on. Come on. Oh, stuff this morning. Dylan works with his son, David, and it's a tough and dirty job. I didn't realise that the bums are right there. Do yeah. you ever get hit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when they come. There you go. I'm just not great with cows. Oh, she's kicking. Just the size of them, then. They're absolutely massive. Dairy farmers like Dylan have had a tough time in recent years. Come on, then. She's letting me do the work here. Yeah. Milk is now a global commodity, and the prices farmers get for their milk can rise and fall dramatically. At times, it costs more to produce milk than farmers can sell it for. When the milk price was poor, yeah, we stopped spending. You've got to think twice before you go and fetch the groceries. And that's the only way you could survive. It was a difficult time, very difficult. If it weren't for my son, David, most probably I'd have thought about packing it in because um, I couldn't see a future. You know, you can't put money into something that doesn't make money back for you. It's, it's, it's not business, it's, you can't do it. Five years ago, and with the family facing an uncertain future, 
they decided to start using some of their milk to produce luxury dairy ice cream right here on the farm. Dom's daughters, Beth and Tess, are with Dylan's wife, Anwen, in the freezer unit. Right, in we go then. Just push through the curtain. Oh. And then nice. in here, we've got all the ice cream mix before we turn it into ice cream. We need seven litres of the base mix. And we'll leave that to drip for a bit. What's made you decide to start making ice cream? My daughter was getting married in 2012 and she wanted ice cream on the menu. So I thought, right, OK. And it went down a treat, so we thought, all right, OK, we'll look into it. And the price of milk dropped, so it was another um, way of making a bit more out of our milk. Yeah. The decision to produce ice cream means the family can protect part of the business from fluctuating milk prices. By turning their milk into ice cream, this is where the magic happens. The Joneses are producing a more valuable product. The price of milk dropped, but I could still charge the same amount for my ice cream, and nobody grumbled. So that was the deciding factor, I think, to go more all into the ice cream. It looks yummy. You want me to stop it for you? Yeah. Their premium ice cream may cost a bit more, but Dylan hopes his customers will buy into the story of how it's made. We are selling more than a product. If somebody asked me, can I name the cows that produce that milk, that produce that ice cream? Yes, I can. Most probably I could tell you which field they were born in, because I know each and every one of them. I don't think a lot could do that. The Morgans have come to a small, family-run farm, making a livelihood producing premium pork. <laughs> Sam and Simon have dreams of switching the nine to five and the daily juggle to rear their own animals and work outdoors. Today, they'll be working with Ella Roberts and her husband, Hugh, who, along with their kids, Anest and Emir, rear just under 40 pedigree Welsh pigs. Unlike some of the larger pig farms, Ella and Hugh's herd spend a lot of their time snuffling around outdoors. It's amazing to see the pigs outside. They've got so much space and it's absolutely gorgeous here. Oh, this is what we prefer, is to have the pigs out as much as possible, really. It's beautiful. It is on a day like this. In the winter, <laughs> it can be completely different. Yeah. You'd be literally walking through mud. Do you think them being outside like this changes the quality of the meat and the taste of the meat? 100%, yes, it does. Yes, definitely. They, they're fitter, so obviously, the fitter they are, the healthier they're going to be. I'll see this sow. Ella and Hugh have built up the business over the past 10 years, but fell into pork production by accident. How old are the piglets? They're just a week old now. Lovely. Would you like to stroke a piglet, Swiss? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Put your hand underneath. We started into pigs because who, my husband, decided that he wanted to keep two pigs as a hobby. Both of them farrowed and we had some piglets. And then we finished them off um, and slaughtered them, selling half a pig to friends and family. So it's all come through word of mouth and through being tasty pork. The Roberts business is now thriving, selling meat at local farmers markets and serving hog roasts at events. Ella knows what keeps her customers coming back for more. It's the taste and the fact that they actually know where exactly the pig has actually been born, been reared and been finished. The whole traceability is there from start to finish. Ella and Hugh believe it's vital for them and their customers to know the pedigree and history of their stock. To help them keep track, each piglet needs a permanent green mark. But what we're going to be doing here now is we're actually going to be tattooing these little piglets. They're actually just over five weeks old at the moment, so they are the ideal size and age to be done. 
The tattoos we put in are just in the ears, and that's purely just for identification. Uh, okay. So at any point, we can look up the pig's number. It will tell us the date of birth, male or female, its parents, grandparents. 101% traceability. This is one of the most important jobs on the farm, a chance for Sam and Simon to get their hands dirty. I'm a bit worried about hitting them. I know I'm probably not, and it's for their own good. Um, as hard as you can. Keep going, keep going. Both hands. Hang on. Am I not staying? Oh, OK. It was all right. I kind of made a crunching noise as I went through the ear, so it wasn't very... I think I'm shaking a little bit, but the more I do it, the more I'll get used to it. It's not as bad as I've had to go. You know, they're happy enough now once they've been uh, tattooed. They're back in the, under the spotlight and, you know, getting into the heat. They didn't seem to bother them at all, so, yeah, fine. Mark and Sarah Burton run their own businesses from home, but would love to trade it all in for a small holding, to be self-sufficient and work together as a family. They're on the Isle of Anglesey with vegetable grower Alwyn Williams. This is a treat for vegetarian Sarah and Amber. So I take it you all grow your own veg then? No. Why not? I have no excuse. I don't know. I don't really know what to do. So you know where your veg comes from? and how fresh it is and all that kind of stuff in. I think I... I know by the way you're looking at me that I really don't. I think I do, but I obviously don't do Well, it. hopefully you'll enjoy today. We'll take you around. We've got plenty of work for you to do. OK? Brilliant. Alwyn and his father, Medwin, grow around 40 different types of vegetables on this seven-and-a-half-acre plot. Here now, these are... kohlrabi. Rather than focusing on quantity, they grow unusual and rare varieties chosen for quality and flavour. My father always says we strive for perfection but settle for excellence. That's uh, the family motto. So I'm going to give you different types of cucumbers to eat now. So cucumber melon is part of the cucurbit family. So these okay. are all cucurbits. I don't know how you could get so many different types of cucumber. Do you know normally a cucumber? It's just really quite watery, isn't it? Yeah. But that's got loads of flavour. What you've got to try and remember is when you buy your fruit and veg, it's had to travel, so it's had to be harvested, it's had to be stored. Yeah. So how long would that take? Well, it varies on the type of fruits, uh, fruits and vegetables. It could be a couple of days, it could be a couple of months. A couple of months? So they can be stored for, yes. They store our veg for a couple of months, so it's not really fresh at all, is it? Alwyn and his father began growing veg to win prizes and sell seeds at horticultural shows, but soon found that the vegetables were a hit with top chefs too. We didn't actually think that we would be selling veg to, you know, restaurants and things like that when we first started doing it. It was just a way of getting something back for our spare produce or stuff that was left over from the growing season. OK, there's about 15 to 20 different types of chilies growing in here. We go from the mild to the ridiculously hot. So I don't know if any of you like chillies. OK, <laughs> well, it could be an interesting time then. <laughs> We're trying to achieve, like, the perfect potato with a perfect taste, with a perfect style to it, or the perfect carrot, be it round, be it purple, be it yellow. But that's what we're aiming to, to try and do. Now, this one here, I've not tasted it myself yet, but apparently it's supposed to be reasonably hot. Go on, Mum. And what's this one? Apocalypto. What? I don't like the name. Mum, you can That one, that just sounds like... Breathe. Should be all right with it. Well, I don't know, I've not tasted it myself. No? Oh! That is mad! Oh! It's actually taken my breath away, though. <laughs> More commercial producers tend to grow high volumes of one or two products, but Alwyn has opted to grow small quantities of lots of different vegetables. We're coming in here now to harvest the aubergines. Okay. Oh, look at that one, 
is huge. You've got to make sure you get that bit. What will you do with that? World's biggest obviously. Spotting a gap in the market, the family now supplies top quality veg to North Wales' finest restaurants, including one with a coveted Michelin star. Today, the Burtons will be helping Alwyn prepare an order for one of his best customers. As requested, two different types of cucumber. We couldn't hand these over to a really nice restaurant with these little edges on. I thought someone had put these in place just to, just to make me laugh. I've got five different types of carrot, and they've all got different tastes, but I didn't realise you could get a carrot that looked like that. It's not just the weird and wonderful that Alwyn grows, though. Even the finest restaurants require a humble potato or two. I can imagine if you had this at home, your own patch, that'd be quite nice to do. Pull them out of the ground and boil them, maybe. A little bit of butter. By concentrating on high-value veg, Alwyn is able to generate an income from a small amount of land. I've come along to see if the Burtons have been inspired by their day at the farm. Hello! Tex come to check up on you to see how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Hello, we're looking. having fun. Are you having fun? Hello. Oh, we're having fun, yeah. Are you surprised that seven and a half acres actually can work, can make you a living? Yeah, I'm surprised. The, vol the actual volume and variety of yeah. things that he's growing and the, the huge success he's had with it as well. Yeah. For you and for Amber, vegetables are such an intrinsic part of your diet. Do you think you will realistically kind of change your habits when you go home? Absolutely. I've realised how limited our diet is and how little I really know about it. So I'd like to learn a lot more and I definitely would put things in place now so that we could grow things from home. I think it's great for the kids to know how things, where they come yeah, from. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, that they've been amazed <laughs> by the different flavours today as well. I think we're going to end up with a little small holding, veggie patch, few animals. You know. I really, really, I think, really I hope think you that, do. That is what will, you know, we'll set it as a goal. Yeah. And then that's what we'll push yeah. towards. I think this whole experience for them has been a huge eye-opener. And what I love is that every day their smiles just get broader and broader. Everything they're discovering is like a little gem. And when Mark said there will be a Burton Small Holding, I 100% believe him. The McNulty's have left the dairy farm behind and come to the Joneses' very own ice cream parlour nine miles away. Hi there, you must be Dolan's daughter. Yes, I'm Christy. Nice to meet you. I'm and Dawn. you as well. This Hi is Bear. Bear. Hi, yeah. <laughs> the family invested heavily and borrowed money to buy this shop. It's run by Dylan and Anwin's daughter, Etlu. What was she like? Can I have the rainbow one? The rainbow one? Yeah, right, please. Okay. I want oh. the rainbow one. Oh, oh excellent. Oh, there you go. Can I get the mint chocolate? Ready? Yeah. Today, Beth will be lending her a hand behind the counter. You're doing well, Beth. Thanks. Yeah. Right, you. Yeah. And what about you, Chubbador? <laughs> Can you I like? have a strawberry sundae, please? The ice cream has proved a real hit with customers. As well as the parlour, the company also supplies a number of shops and restaurants in the local area. I don't think the business would have started if we didn't have a, a good quality product. That's important. If anybody's going to do anything with food products, it's got to be the best. That's why we endeavour to try, make the best ice cream we can. Lovely. There we go. What's that? Yeah, that's it. So bring it out there. Look what I've got. Ooh, oh, wow. wow. Look, there you Look go. That. Mm -hmm. That's your strawberry sundae. <gasps> Is that whipped cream on the top? No? Yeah, everything. Wow. There's a lot of strawberry pieces in it too. The girls have followed the Joneses' milk from cow to cone. And while they may not be buying a dairy herd anytime soon, they've been impressed by what they've seen. This family's definitely given me something to think about. I think it's fantastic how they're able to change their own fortunes and change their own futures by making their own brand, packaging their own ice creams and starting to make a profit from their, from their milk. I just think that it's admirable that all the family are still together. They all have different roles on the farm yeah. and in the industry, what they're producing. 
and look at how successful it is. It's paid it's off. It's not stopped today. Yeah. So Very it's brilliant. Very little store. Is everything oh, okay for you? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Ice cream's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really yeah, creamy. It's so really nice. Yeah. It's a hello proud moment when you see people enjoying a product you've produced. There's nothing better than seeing people outside the shop with an ice cream. And they enjoy it. And you know, I milk those cows that produce that milk. I get emotional. Damn it. <laughs> Back at the Pedigree Pig Farm, there's no rest for the Morgans. I'm not sure what the next job is, but there's a scraper, a shovel and a wheelbarrow, so it's not looking good, is it? They're getting a feel for the dirty work involved in producing top quality pork and what a tough boss Ella is. Sam, if yeah. you start on this side first and no. then they'll be nice okay. and clean, ready for the barrel Stay to come in. Way. Yes. Oh, pig poo. Yes, what else would you expect in a pig pen? <laughs> I didn't expect to stand in it. <laughs> Piggies. I love the pigs, I think they're amazing. I didn't realise how much hard work pigs were going to be, though. I think with my day job, I go to work and I come home. Even though I'm answering emails from home, I can answer those from the sofa sort of thing, or I can go out for the day and I can work while I'm away. But really, these guys can't leave here, you know? They have to be here in the morning, they have to be here at night, they have to be here every day or get somebody that they trust to look after the animals. For Ella and Hugh, rearing the pigs is only the first part of the process. As artisanal food producers, their work isn't done until their pork is on a plate. I don't think this is a job um, for me and Hugh. Um, it's more by now of our lifestyle of getting up in the morning, a day's work on the farm, um, looking after the pigs, to taking the pigs to the slaughterhouse. But before the pigs can leave the farm, they need to be fattened up which means there are hungry mouths to feed twice a day. There we are, Sam. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Ow! He's bitten by a pig. <laughs> so what would your normal day be on the, on the farm doing this? Um, normal day? Yeah, um, just a normal day, There's yeah. no such thing. <laughs> this is probably the easy part of the year. So we're talking, talking about 12 hours a day, yeah. Yeah. What are the hours like on the busy time of the year, then? Uh, yeah, you don't want to know. You know, sleep deprivation. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So what about a holiday? When was the last time holiday. you had a holiday? Uh, yeah, holiday? we go to the shows. Yeah, we take the pics with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they come on holiday as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a lot of satisfaction from the job, as well as being very tiring at some times. Um, when you hear the people with the positive feedback or to ring you up and comment on the actual flavour, it does encourage you to carry on. The day has given the Morgans a sense of how much hard work goes into producing food on a small family farm. I thought today was brilliant. Yeah, it's a great place, isn't it? Is she Ellen's really, really hard working, yeah, isn't she? Yeah. She just doesn't seem to stop. I don't know how she does it, especially with small children. With two kids, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got, yeah. kids, isn't it? We've know, got yeah. kids ourselves, and like we struggle to work a job sort of nine to five, don't we? Yeah. But she's doing it all weekends, evenings, early mornings. Mm. But rearing pigs is only part of the business. The Morgans will be returning to the farm to help Ella and Hugh prepare a hog roast for the local agricultural show. <laughs> The families have all returned to Gareth's farm and to their daily chores at the yurt camp. When they first arrived, each of the families was given a trained sheepdog. Oh, good girl. Good girl. For the past few weeks, 
one person from each family has been trying to get their dog to work for them. Yeah, she's a good dog. Today, the dog's owner, Gwyn Lightfoot, has come to check on their progress. I don't walk towards you now. The last time you were here, really, you tasked all our families with basically just spending time with the dog, building up that bond. What is the next stage for Mist and Lucy and Dom? Well, we're going to have a go and see if they'll work for her. She does know her commands, she's been trained. Yep. There's no excuses from that side. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean for a minute that she will work for you. Do you have a feeling whether Mist is sort of more responsive to either one of you or is yeah. it sort of equal love? We've, we've <laughs> um, certainly found that although she will look to us both for affection, um, she doesn't listen to a word I say. <laughs> I'll try and call her, she'll have, she just ignores me and she runs straight to wherever Lucy is. So oh, really? She's, she's definitely picked, um, picked Lucy as the favourite, yeah. I think. OK, I think we'll see how yeah, that works yeah. out this morning. Have a good lesson. I will. Yes, see I how will. you get on, and um, we'll catch up a bit later in the day, I see do. how she gets on. Yeah. Brilliant. Fun. Thank Look you. at her, she's yeah. raring to go. <laughs> right, so if I send her to the right, and then I'll ask you to repeat everything I'm telling you. Okay. okay. Are we? There are four basic commands. Away sends the dog to the right. Now, lie down. Lie down. Stand or lie down to stop the dog. Lie down! Come by. Come by! Come by Go sends come the by. dog to the left. Bye. And walk on to drive lie the down. sheep in a straight line. Walk, walk this way. I'll let Brigham see you. Walk on. Away. 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 Lie down! Again. Lie down! Come by. Come by. Come by. Mist. Come by. What you did there was good. It doesn't help that I'm in the field with you, that's for sure. Okay. Because she doesn't know who she's working yeah. for. Away. Lie down! You'll see that when there's no other people here, just you and her, mm -hmm. she'll behave a lot differently. Yeah. yeah. You know, all this is new to her as well. Yeah. Yeah. Lie down! Walk on. Having this kind of control over a dog, it's, it's absolutely exhilarating. So it's like a buzz, it's a different buzz. I'm usually an adrenaline junkie, you know, I like contact sports, fast and furious, but she's changed my mind. It's the best feeling ever, it's, it's amazing. As yeah, Simon takes to the day. field, the weather has turned. Let's hope it doesn't dampen his efforts with his dog, Jess. We Lay down. Walk on. We We Lay down. Lay down. We've obviously bonded well with her over the last few yeah. days. But no, well done. I'm very pleased with what oh, you're going on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Walk on. I knew she was pretty good because she would go and come back without too much effort at all, you know? But I didn't think she would respond to my commands, but she did, and I was quite pleased with that, yeah. Away! Lie down! That's the most proud I have so far, actually, you know, that I've actually got her to work, you know? I'm really thrilled with that. Lie down! He's obviously spent a lot of time with her, hasn't he? And I think these dogs are very much like children. You know, you can be buying them all the presents and the snacks and the treats, and at the end of the day, it's time you need to give them. You give them time and you'll get respect from them. Mark and his dog, Trim, are up last. Once she's at 12 o'clock, down. Down! Good, that's good. She's, work, she's working wet, better on down better than lie down, actually. Down, yeah. yeah. Down! That's very good. All the handlers have formed a bond with their dogs, but for Mark, it's tapped into something from his past. My childhood was probably the furthest you could get from farming. It was poor. We didn't really have much, but my closest friend was probably my dog, Benji, a sheepdog. We used to, you know, do most things together. My end goal is to eventually become a shepherd. Put me in a field with a sheepdog, maybe two, and the sheep, and I think I would be very, very happy. Walk on. Down. Down. Come by. Come by. That's Down. It's good. good. That's bloody good. Come by. Down. Our way. Down. Mark, I think uh, you've come a long, long way. Thank you. And I've been 
genuinely surprised today. 12 o'clock, down. down. I mean, if you keep going at this pace, I'll be out of a job very soon, I think. Well, maybe we'll work together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank Good you open. very much. Thank you. Genuinely enjoying everything. Whatever's thrown at me so far, I'll just, you know, I'll get stuck in, whether it's me on my own, or me with the children, or me with Sarah. Um, this is once in a lifetime opportunity, really, to be in such a fantastic place. The summer is drawing to an end. And it's time for the farming community to come together and celebrate their rural way of life. Gareth and I are sending the families away to take part in one of the highlights of the countryside calendar, an agricultural show. I know certainly from, from the local agricultural shows to me, um, they have incredibly broad appeal. Yeah. So you absolutely have, you know, the farmers, farmers, the producers, the artisans are all there. But you have, you know, members of the public from every walk of life yeah. and every age coming yeah. there. It is a chance for that connection. In a rural community here, there'll be word of mouth, and word of mouth is worth more than anything, than any advert in any newspaper, yeah. on any television show. And that's how they build their businesses within these smaller areas. The families will be joining other local farmers as they prepare to show off their stock and produce at the upcoming Egloisbach show in the Conwy Valley. This end, the head end goes on that side, OK? OK. Sam and Simon have returned to Ella and Hugh Roberts' pig farm. Four of the pigs raised on the farm have been slaughtered, ready to be served as hog roasts at the show. Yeah. Cut on the skin on both the legs. They'll be giving them a hand to cook and serve the roast, but I'm keen to find out if all the extra work preparing the pigs is financially worth it. What's the difference between uh, selling a pig to a butcher, a carcass to a butcher, and selling it um, as a hog roast? Well, obviously, a pig delivered to the butcher um, as a whole carcass compared to the hog roast pig, you'd be hoping, or I'd be hoping really, to get at least four, if not five times the amount of money from a hog roast pig. But saying that, your butcher's pig is killed, delivered in a whole carcass, yeah. where the amount of work involved in preparing the pig, paying for your pitch fee, yeah. the actual cooking, a lot of hard work. But is it worth it? When you get a good day selling and you've had the fantastic feedback, then yes, you do feel like you've done something good and definitely worth it. Ella will roast the pigs overnight, but she will need to keep a close eye on them, and tonight she's going to have company. Just going to check out my bedroom for the evening. Pretty cosy, I've slept in worse places. I'm so looking forward to tonight. I can't wait. It's like a, like a mini adventure. <laughs> Come on. Oh, she's really strong, strong, isn't she? <laughs> she doesn't want to move. Come on. She's stubborn. The Morgans won't be the only ones attending the show. Lucy and Dom have come to a small family farm renowned for its highland cattle, and today they'll be preparing two of the farm's prize cows, Rose and Cariad, for the show ring. What we usually do, power wash them first and getting rid of the, the mud off, and then you can sort of wet them everywhere else, but just slightly, like I say, enough to get the lather on the shampoo yeah, yeah. and things. The cows <laughs> sell on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hilary Hughes and her husband, Geraint, have been showing cattle for five years and know the judges will be looking for a well-groomed cow. Any particular setting? <laughs> <laughs> Powerful. Oh, okay. But having spent some time at a dairy farm, Dom has discovered that cows aren't her favourite farmyard animal. Can you have a shot? Okay. Can you bear it? Just don't go too close to it. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, so just gonna aim at there. Yeah. I don't know what I'm worried about. I'm just worried because they're bigger than me. You can always feel like you can overpower a sheep, you can pick up a sheep. 
But the cows, they're too heavy, they're too, too big. <laughs> Dom's going to have to overcome her fear. She and Lucy will be representing the farm, parading the cows at the show. That's it. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Come on, ladies. Oh, she's a wild one. Come on. <laughs> I'll go in front and then she might fall a bit. She's very, very strong and very strong-willed as well. She wants to tell me what to do and I'm a little bit too frightened to tell her what to do. <laughs> Come on, darling. Come on, Rose. Come on. Come on. This is scary. My heart is pounding. Going up and down there. You all right? Yeah. Come on. This way. This is going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> be like Popeye by the end of this. <laughs> Come on, Kenny. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet I'm you. Martin. Can we meet my show sheep? Thank you. The Burtons have come to meet Martin Civil and his award-winning flock. We have uh, pedigree Hampshire Downs and pedigree Blue Texels. We use the showing as a shop window, really, to show the best of our sheep, and hopefully we get the top prices for our sheep if we sell. Martin has selected one of his top blue Texel rams for the Burtons to spruce up, ready for the show. Okay, you can just lead him, just say, walk on to me, walk on. Please come with me, walk on, walk on, walk on. But first, they'll need him to stand still. He's really strong. Please wait. Oh, she's going. I don't know what's going on. If you just give him a little bit of a brush off and try and get all the straw off him. To pick up prizes, the ram needs to look its best. Its fleece needs to be combed and trimmed. It's not quite as easy as it looks, is it? When you pull in the wool, it gets stuck, so you have to go at quite a rhythm. So soft, it's like, that's spongy. It's well nice. So he comes from the line there and he'll move to the bottom and feel the bottom. The judges yeah. will also be looking at the ram's build. Let's see if you like the feel of his bottom. What am I feeling for? Muscle and a good peachy bum. <laughs> Yeah. To get top marks, it needs to have a good covering of meat yeah, and has to be in prime condition for breeding. Now, the next bit is one of the most vital bits with pedigree breeding, because if I was to sell him as a ram and he didn't do his job... OK. ..he'd be worthless, wouldn't he? Yeah. No, so... I'm not feeling anything else. Martin, I'm really not. So now you're going to have to feel his oh, testicles. Oh, you're kidding me! <laughs> so I want you to lean down. Uh, darling. No! Grab his testicles. Oh! and make sure that they're both the, they're both the same size. You are size. kidding me! I'm working with it. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God! And that, make sure that they're of a relatively equal size. One isn't really small. No, oh, I can don't, say... Don't, don't rub them together, certain, darling. <laughs> that none of them are really small. You should always make sure that the halter's nice and tight so it can't yeah. slip off, yeah? If you just walk him to the centre over there. A big part of showing a sheep is how the owner handles the animal. Just put the, do the rope like that as if you're showing him off. At the show, it will be down to 14-year-old Xavier to impress the judges, as he'll be taking part in the young handlers competition. Showing him off, so you want him to lift his header, so make a bit of noise as you're going along. Come on, boy. Come on. Right, and then they'll ask you then to, to put the animal to stand. And then the judge will come from behind now. So I want you to put your knee just in his chest. Don't hold his head so high. Put if you say, do this job, um, and it's not a competition, you get one Xavier. If you ask him to do this job and he's competing against another five, that's when the true Xavier comes out. He's going to focus. I think he's going to do this. Yeah, I do. He's it's doing special. this for Manchester. <laughs> OK, and then he'll say, thank you very much. If you could just walk away, please. Oh. OK? And at all times, I want you to be looking in the judge's eyes. There you go, that's it. It's not really a skill. You just got to like, bond with the male ram lab. Then it's just more relaxed and they follow you around the ring, so...
tomorrow, all the families will have the chance to show off their skills. But at the showground, one of our apprentice farmers has a job to do before hitting the hay. This is slightly crazy. It's like half two in the morning and we've woken up to start a pig round. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very crazy. Very tired. Oh, you hear the gas coming through? Yeah. Lovely. Close the lid. Here we are. She's cooking, so we'll give her a good 20 minutes, half an hour now to see how she's getting on with the crackling. Okay. Sam will join Ella to roast the hogs for a further 10 hours, waking up during the night to check on them. It's the morning of the Egloise Bach show in the Conwy Valley. The show is a highlight of the rural community's countryside calendar and this year celebrates its 70th birthday. It's a chance for farming families to come together to catch up and celebrate a year of hard work and a unique way of life. And a certain Mr Jones is the show's vice president. Agricultural shows are our shop window. It's a place where we can go and celebrate our industry, but with other people. The farmers are taking some of the best stock in the world to these shows. There's a lot of local producers, a lot of local foods. It brings the whole countryside into one small area for everybody to come in and immerse themselves. Two hog roasts, apple sauce and stuff in. Uh, apple sauce on mine. Yeah, a bit of both on mine. Crackling on all three as well. After a long night and little sleep, Ella and Sam have been joined by Simon at the hog roast tent and business is booming. Thank you. Thank you, enjoy. When Sam was texting me last night, I was thinking they put in a hell of a shift yesterday, you know, and uh, it's, it's pretty much a 48 hour shift from start to finish, you know, it's... Uh, and a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. I put some stuff in on yours, yeah, lovely. Yeah, if you're happy to take the menu, Sam. £20, pounds, please. Thank you very much. We've just had a gentleman there come over, ask us what type of pig it was. Told him it was purebred Welsh. He said there's another guy here with uh, doing hog roast, didn't even know where the pig was from. So he said that's why they came to us. That's her whole story, really, isn't it? It's their selling point that they can, when they are customer facing, that they can give them the whole history on the pig that this person's going to eat. So was this a large white? No, it was a pedigree Welsh pig. Yes. Born and reared on her own farm over in Leedsvine. I think she does enjoy this side. Um, I think she likes seeing the customers and actually seeing them enjoy the product that she's reared as well. There are over a hundred different competition classes today, with almost a thousand animals expected in the ring. Lucy and Dom are about to be reunited with their Highland cattle. Really nervous this morning. Rose is doing her usual um, mooing and looking at me with her crazy eye. Look at this guy, wow. <laughs> I'm still very nervous. My main worry is I'm going to let go of her and someone's going to get hurt. Morning, girls. Morning. <laughs> How's it all going? Uh, salons underway. <laughs> feel like a hairdresser. <laughs> right, come on, let's see you walking right. these two around. Yeah. Come on then. Come on. <laughs> and no slacking. <laughs> ah, the girl. That's it. <laughs> hey, tighter. Dom, Dom, you need to be tighter. <laughs> but getting Rose to behave in the ring won't be easy. Let Lucy really going. Good. Yeah, Carrie has a good girl. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on, Carrie. Mum. On the other side of the field, it'll be down to rookie sheep handler Xavier Burton to win the prizes. Hi, Martin. Morning, guys. Good morning. You all OK? You OK? You're looking very smart. How's nice it going? Good, thank you. You? <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're looking very smart this morning, Hi. especially you, sir. Are you all right, Bob? <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous for him this morning. I'm not 100% he knows what he's doing. What do you remember from what I taught you the other day, Zav? 
Uh, you said you can push behind the legs to get them like parallel with each other, so it's like a table. Yeah. Um, if I can go on one knee, you can then lift its head up a bit so the rears are sticking up so they look sharper. I'm hoping the competition's going to be easy so I can get it over and done with quickly and win. Martin and his family are already tasting success with their sheep. We've just got a first here, first prize. Xavier has a lot to live up to. Okay, Zav, you've seen how it all works now, so uh, it's time for you to become part of the team. So here's your white coat. Man. Thanks. Okay? Yeah. So good luck. I feel honoured to have a white coat. <laughs> because it just shows how professional I'm going to have to be today. Hold your confidence and do as I told you, but more importantly than anything, keep your eyes on the judges. And uh, don't take your eyes off him. And keep smiling. Proud as a father. This is one of those moments I'll never forget. It's something he'd never done before. I've never seen him in a white coat and a tie. So... It's a proud moment. Let's go, Let's girls. Go. Here we go. Show time. Oh, Come there. In the ring, it's now or never for Lucy and Dom. They're competing in the pairs category with their Highland cattle, Cariad and Rose. She keeps trying to get in her back. Come on, Rose. Keep her moving. Come on. Come on, come on, Rose. That's a good one. Keep going. Lucy looks a lot more confidence than Dom, but truth be said, Dom has got the wild one of the two. Here, go on. Go on. Go on. Dom's having a bit of trouble. Keep moving. Keep moving, Dom. No, 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 no. Keep moving. That's it. She's not giving her. And because they've got horns as well, that they can give you a, a bit of a poke. So you've just got to be careful. And the weather's not on Dom's side either. I think they'll stop now to do some judging. Come on. Rose! Sandra, Sandra, grab her, grab her, grab her, grab her. You got her? Yep. Yeah. The girls' stint at the show has proved just how tough working with animals can be. If I'm ever going to be a farmer, I'll be a sheep farmer, because he's so... <laughs> I've not enjoyed any part of this, but um, I'm taking part, and that's what matters, I suppose. <laughs> I've overcome my fear of cows. I suppose that's, uh, that's a big thing. Despite Rose's disobedience and out of five competitors, the girls managed to take third prize. Xavier and his blue Texel Ram are up next in the Young Handlers competition. And keep smiling and keep staring the judge out and tell him that you're the winner, OK? Yeah. First, Xavier needs to get the ram to stand still, ready for the judges to inspect. Um, uh, Where do you come from? I come from Manchester. Do you? Are you on holiday here, are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> the judges will be looking at the ram's build, its fleece, and its breed characteristics. But points can also be won and lost depending on how well Xavier handles the ram. Okay. Ready. Go! Hey, Donna, that's you. Well done, you. Sure. Coming all the way from Manchester, come back again. Oh, I came first. Just better last, but still my first. Well done! Well done. Well, 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 well,
I went so nervous, just didn't know what to do. <laughs> you looked really confident, and what was just what was interesting was that you were clearly remembering everything you'd been told. You knelt down when you were supposed to kneel down. You held his head, looking you know really good. I think you did a really good job to come away with a rosette in your first yeah, first show. show. You did a great job. Well yeah. done, Zav. Really well done, Zav. Um, really. Him. I mean, you know, <laughs> two weeks ago I've never touched a sheep, and now he's just walking off like it's a spaniel. Back at the hog roast tent, all the hard work has paid off. They've sold every scrap of pork. <laughs> I caught you. Yeah. That looks well deserved. <laughs> it's it's obviously been a busy afternoon. Super busy, yeah. Compared to your working life, yeah. has it given you sort of pause for thought when you've seen actually the work that has to go into making a business like this viable? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's massive respect for them. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have the time, you know, I don't know how they do it. But this one thing I would take away from this whole process is that I enjoy working with Sam and the kids as a unit, yeah. you know, and, and, right. and that would be the ideal nice. solution for yeah. me, you know? Yeah. Gareth and I have kept a close eye on the families and we've rewarded those who've shown outstanding dedication and commitment. As families, you've all worked as teams. Yeah. You've all come together and I'm seeing you all develop. And it's been very, very difficult, again, to pick one person. But I've got to. I've got to give this stick to somebody. Who has Sean, who's been the rock in his family, so I'd like to give this stick to Mark. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Really well deserved. Thank well you. done. Well done, Mark. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this guy has been choking he's been for his stick. Desperate. <laughs> for the last couple of weeks, he's been working so hard. Come on. Oh, concentrate. Oh, it feels good. emotional. I've won this crock today. If I'd have known, years ago, that this that, that would stick make would make him so happy, I would have bought him one. In all fairness, he's tried really hard with every task. He's given it 110%. He has been the glue for us this, I think, the last three weeks. So he's really been there, hasn't he, to help us out? Yeah. I know it's a stick, but there's been a lot of hard graft gone into this, and you know that my dream is to become a shepherd one day. And how could I be a shepherd without a crook? I didn't want to buy one, because they're about 32 quid. I wanted to try and win one. So here we are, I'm a proud man. Next time, harvest means hard work for our families on the hill farm. This is teamwork now. They face a tough test on the tractor. You know, you've got miles off? Yeah, have we got? You've got miles have off. I, yeah. Yeah. Have I, yeah? Have I, yeah? Oh, dear. <laughs> and difficult decisions about the animals in their care. Some of the livestock here will be sent to be slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs>